Today, we're gonna go over how to get more growth out of every single squat that you do. Wait, hold on, let me rephrase that. Every single compound movement you do for legs. It's an even bolder claim. Here's a good test. Take a look at my form on the hack squat. If you can't instantly identify what I'm doing wrong, and more important than that, how to fix it, then I guarantee you're making the same mistake. Puss. It has everything to do with the physics of a squat. So to be able to teach you how to increase torque, tension, and bias specific muscles, I'm gonna need this thing. Now this guy's probably a mechanical engineer, built the same from scratch, I am not. I was a Lincoln Logs kid, never got connects because my parents knew it was just a matter of time before I shoved them all up my- So I need to go to Home Depot, bring all that stuff back here. And attempt to build this thing from scratch. Not bad. I'd like to dedicate this to my big fat third grade art teacher that never said I'd amount to anything. Look at me now. C I want you to think of this model as a direct reflection of your frail little sad body. Now, when you squat, the load or resistance you're working against has a direct line of force that should always be over the center of your foot. If it's not, you'll fall over. Doesn't matter if you're doing a high bar, low bar, or even front squat, you should be able to trace the bar path right over top of the line of force. So the first thing I would do before trying to perfect your squat is identify any weaknesses. And you could do this easily by downloading an app that tracks the path of your bar. The most common fault you're gonna see is as you start to ascend, the butt kicks back, which causes the bar to drift forward. And this is due to your lower back trying to compensate for your weak glutes, specifically glute max. And it's a simple fix, start doing butt stuff. Now, as you descend into a squat, all you're technically doing is decreasing the angle of the joints that are involved, the hip, knee, and ankle, and therefore lengthening the corresponding muscles. So for the hip joint, it's the glutes and hamstrings. For the knee joint, it's your quads. And for the ankle joint, it's your soleus and gastroc. And I'm gonna state this as simply as I possibly can because this for me was the aha moment and when I realized what I was screwing up. The muscles that get the most stress or tension is dictated by which joint is furthest away from that line of force. You either got a piece of metal in my eye or my wife farted on my pillow again. As the joint moves away from the line of force, it creates what's called a moment arm. The greater the moment arm, the more torque on the joint, which increases demand of the muscles involved in supporting that joint. Once you fully grasp that sentence, for me it took a second because I spent my entire childhood in the Sylvan Learning Center, didn't help, I still read at fifth grade level. You realize it's just a matter of manipulating your form or finding other squat variations that create the longest possible moment arm in the joint and corresponding muscles you're trying to target. A traditional high bar squat should have a relatively equal moment arm when comparing hip to knee joint when your femur is parallel to the floor. A low bar squat biases the hip joint by increasing the moment arm at the proximal end, and a front squat biases the knee joint by increasing the moment arm at the distal end. So let's take that information and look back at the hack squat I did at the beginning of this video. As I descend, everything is going exactly as planned. The line of force is perfectly angled from where my shoulders contact the pad, and you can see hack squats are inherently phenomenal at biasing your quads because when you're parallel to the platform, you create the longest possible moment arm in that knee joint. But the moment I go past parallel, well, my knees actually come closer to my body, meaning I'm shortening that moment arm. I'm also bringing my hips, my glutes, and hamstrings involved because I'm shortening the angle of that hip joint. So I'm taking less stress off the quads, putting it onto the hips, and I'm fing it all up. Now, does that mean you should only do half reps on the hack squat? Absolutely not. The solution is simple. You're just gonna walk your feet down to the point that when you're at the bottom of the lift, the moment arm of your knee joint is at its longest. The problem is most people don't have the ankle mobility to do that. Here are some band-aid fixes for you. Some hack squats will actually allow you to change the angle of the platform to make up for your poor mobility. It's adorable. Or you buy yourself a pair of shoes like this. Most will have a three quarters inch heel, which puts you at 20 degrees into plantar flexion before you even start the lift. So it should make up for any of your inadequacies. These are obviously really small. They're not mine. They're my wife's. I don't wear high heel shoes. Or you go full hacksaw Jim Duggan and you bring your own two by four to the gym to put under your heels. If you don't know who that is, get out right now. Go away. He's a goddamn legend. Or my personal favorite, just lean into the fact that you have poor mobility and do a Tom Platt style of hack squat. And I know some people like to play it safe, missionary position, lights off so nobody can see your butthole. I get it. The fact of the matter here is you're gonna have to use a lighter weight because you're taking your hips completely out of the equation. Your feet are gonna be perfectly fine. They can support you in that position. And if your knees are comfortable enough to go through a full range of motion, then they're gonna be fine with this. Don't freak out. And this brings up a very important point when it comes to leg press, because now that we understand the physics behind these movements, you're gonna immediately realize that an exercise that starts your hip joint at a decreased angle is gonna make it very hard to bias it towards your quads. Pink eye. I got it. So if you see somebody say you can easily target your quads by pushing your feet close together, which I used to say, 
you can call bull just by looking at the angle of the actual joints and the moment arms involved. The only real way to bias your quads on here, which I've verified with the EMG device, is walking your feet all the way down to the point that when you're at the bottom, you have no choice. You're going to lift up your heels. All the pressure is going to be on your toes, which again, I don't think is a bad thing because the more I've tested, I've realized that exercises that shift the pressure into your toes in the pursuit of actually getting your knee joint away from that line of force are the golden ticket. And I've got the golden ticket. So how can you apply this to your training? Well, let's start with quads. We know we need to limit hip angle if possible and create the longest moment arm for your knee joint. So exercises like the leg press, like we talked about by moving your feet down, hack squat, same way. But also exercises like a sissy squat are phenomenal as long as you don't lean forward because then again, you're recruiting those glutes. Or by doing a split squat where you attempt to drive your knee as far forward as possible while maintaining an upright posture because again, if you lean forward, you screw it up and adding a plate under your heel will help you get the job done. And if you're somebody that hates erotic asphyxiation and front squats but still wants to target their quads more than a traditional squat, putting a plate under your heels will allow you to drive your knees further away from you. Is that what I really wanted to say? For glutes, just think, how would I screw this up for quads? So go back to that split squat, lean forward and decrease knee angle. But one of my all time favorites is setting up for a stiff leg, but then slightly bending the knees and driving my hips as far back away from that line of force as possible. It allows you to pull a lot more weight and the path is perfectly aligned for targeting that glute max. And I know what somebody's gonna say, easier said than done because I have long ass femurs. So every time I squat, it looks like I'm trying to blow myself. I get it. It sucks. That actually is not bad form. That's squatting based upon your own biomechanics. But everything I said still rings true. So buying some squat wedges might be the only thing that allows you to maintain the upright posture and drive your knees away from you to be able to bias your quads. These are not bad. Amazon. <gasps> And if you haven't bought the most recent Backed by Science program, the cool part is it's kind of alive. Even based upon stuff I learned making this video, I'm going to make a few changes. Just, it's going to suck worse.